Okay, so esophageal feeders come in two, generally in two, three, or four quart capacity. And they come in short tubes, and they come in long tubes. And in general, they'll always have a bulb on the end, and that's to keep from two things. It's to keep from going down the wrong pipe. So this should be big enough that it's really hard to get it into the trachea or the windpipe, okay? And it's also there so that if you have trouble getting the calf to swallow it, uh, the bulb is going to keep the calf from you traumatizing the throat, okay? So if it has cracks, teeth marks, throw it away. I can't count on one hand or two hands the times we've had to go after half of the esophageal feeder in the stomach of the calf. So duct tape, not good for this one. Duct tape was Minnie's way of writing notes on the calf stall. I'm all about that, but no duct tape on the esophageal feeder. All right. Because people don't like to pass an esophageal feeder, I like to ask the people only to pass it once. All right? So, in the case of colostrum, we want to give four quarts of colostrum. When we use the esophageal feeder, we're going to give the full dose all at once when the calf will absorb it. Okay? And unless it's a 60 pound jersey, when you tube, use the esophageal feeder, you have to use the big volume. When we use the esophageal feeder, whatever the liquid is, is going to end, start out and going into that little underdeveloped rumen. But that rumen in the baby calf doesn't hold very much. So if we give four quarts, about two quarts or maybe a little less is going to go into the rumen and the rest spills over to the abomasum the true stomach, where it's absorbed. And the stuff from the rumen does get to the abomasum, okay? So don't be worried about all of it going into the wrong place and therefore not being absorbed, okay? It will get absorbed. And in fact, when we look at studies that give the full four quarts all at once, when the calf has not had anything in its mouth and it's the most capable of absorbing it, they'll beat the calves in their total protein concentrations, they'll beat the calves that get two and two, or two and maybe not another two every single time. So this is a very efficient way to do it, okay? So get comfortable with it. I'm gonna show you a, a few tricks. Um, we put the electrolyte solution. So if you have one gallon esophageal feeders, they should be in the colostrum area, okay? And the one gallon feeders don't go for sick cats. So put them where the colostrum, all the colostrum administration materials are, your replacement products, and things like that, okay? And they belong there. In the case of calves with diarrhea, all right, these two-quart feeders are great because we generally administer two quarts of electrolytes at a time. And for me, I won't force feed generally milk until a calf has missed several meals, but if they are dehydrated or they have very loose feces, um, if the manure is watery, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, and they're going to get two quarts of electrolyte solution. And if it's super watery, they're going to get two quarts twice a day. All right? So the two quart feeders belong in the calf treatment area. Okay? Because you only need to pass this once, and you can get an adequate amount into the calf. How many should you have? And I, many today talked about that a little bit. My preference is because th this is an easy way to pass disease from one calf to the other. Not so much on the colostrum side, although a calf that has been in the maternity pen to make its standing attempts, so if it's 10 minutes and it's been standing and nose diving several times, believe me, the manure of the cow is in that mouth. And while the cow looks normal and the manure looks normal and the maternity pen may even look good, that's an 80, 90, 100 pound calf nose diving, okay? It will find the coliforms. And the calving cows, uh, I like this figure just to make an impression. The calving cows, in one gram, a pea sized piece of manure, have one million more coliforms than they do at any other stage of their lactation or gestation cycle. They relax their immunity around calving so that they can put the immune factors into their colostrum and share it with the calf. So their immunity is low, and while their immunity is low, their coliform shedding, and salmonella is a coliform, E. coli is a coliform. 
crypto is not a coliform, but that's when the cows shed crypto into the calving environment, okay? So that's where you're gonna find that. And if that calf is nose diving around there, and it's got that in the mouth, and six calves are born a day, and you use the same one gallon feeder to go from one calf to the next calf to the next calf, that dose will be right on here. Probably the worst salmonella outbreak I ever worked with, it was killing calves as early as two days of age, was one esophageal feeder. They were doing a great job of giving one gallon to calves really early. But unfortunately, along with the colostrum, the calves got the salmonella, okay? So enough esophageal feeders so that you have one for every calf born that day, maximum capacity. So if the largest number of calves ever born is eight calves, I'd like, you to, see, like to see eight of these on the farm. That means when you finish one calf, it can go into a disinfected solution and be clean. And then the night person can rinse them out, put them on a drying rack, and then they're ready for use the next day. Okay? Very dilute bleach or whatever sanitizer you use is very effective, but rinse it before you use it again. In a similar way, with the two quart electrolyte solutions, two, as many bags as you might treat calves with electrolytes for diarrhea that day. All right. My criteria for using electrolyte solution is if it's liquid, calves are going to get electrolytes. I do give the calves a chance to nurse their electrolytes because many of the electrolyte solutions are very palatable and calves will nurse it really well. Okay, so I give them a chance to nurse it. If they don't nurse it, and I do a skin tent, I'll show you on the calf. If I do a skin tent and the skin tent stays up more than five seconds, then I'm going to tube it before I go to bed. Okay. All right. The calf must be able to either sit up or stand. Okay. If I can't get it to sit up, I won't use it. If it's a calf with diarrhea or a sick calf and its abdomen is big, I won't use an esophageal feeder. If it's breathing really hard, no esophageal feeder. The best way to do this is to push their butt into the corner of a pen. So Mindy's going to be the corner of my pen. Maybe Kathy, can I borrow you again if you're here? Or somebody will really just be a side. Tom, thank you. A side swiper. All right. If the calf is sitting down with this one gallon feeder, I don't worry about kinking off the tube, okay? If it's standing up, probably a good way to do it is just kink it off. The two quart ones or the longer tubes usually have a clamp, so it's going to be in the off position. I have the advantage of having a little bit of an inseam, so I, gotta, I generally straddle calves for the things that I do. Okay, left side is probably the easiest side because the esophagus is kind of on the left side. So from here, calf's going to nurse this electrolyte. All right, the most important thing I tell you today is when you drench cows, when you use a balling gun, and when you use an esophageal feeder, this is not the right position. If you do this, somebody gets in a hurry, and this thing becomes a weapon on the back of the throat. And how many of you have seen calves that came with esophageal feeder to get their colostrum, and on day two, they're and their heads are out like this, and you think they have respiratory disease, but they have a terribly sore throat from the trauma. One way to prevent that is during passage, cow or calf, is keep the nose below the ears, all right? That means that this is gonna follow the path of the tongue. It's gonna hit the back of the tongue where there's a ridge, and the calf should swallow, all right? Okay, nose down, side, left side of the mouth. Pass it. Once it swallows, the tube passes very easily, and I know when there's only four inches left, okay? Now I'm going to hold on. Now the calf can change its head position. I'm okay. All right? And then just gravity flow. Okay? So gravity flow, and it's getting a dose of electrolytes. But if this calf fights and throws itself over, you know that somebody's in a two quart, if I was giving four quarts of, of uh, colostrum and it fought the two quarts, there's no way somebody's going to pass it again. Take it out, refill it, and pass it again. So make sure you have the right tools 
for the right calves. So I'm holding on to the esophageal feeder now. Now I don't care if the head goes up a little bit because it's already passed, okay? I'm, I'm tending to push the nose down a little bit, but not very much. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And so it's getting a little benefit peel of two quarts of electrolyte solution. And a lot of calves benefit from electrolyte solutions. This electrolyte solution, like many, it says on the label that it goes well in milk or milk replacer, okay? And that is a source of electrolytes, but most of the time when we're feeding calves with diarrhea electrolytes, it's the water they need more than the electrolytes, okay? So make sure, even though it's compatible with milk or milk replacer, what that calf needs is volume. Tom. Thank you, Minnie. Okay, so make sure you give them the fluid. So esophageal feeders, right size for whatever you're giving them. Atraumatic, no trauma. Put your patient people on the esophageal feeder portion of the, of the tools that you're supposed to use, because that's the best for the calf.